A while ago, I made this video, where we talked about spawning random power-ups. Before that, I also uploaded a two-part series on how to make a Terraria mining mechanic for your game. So for this video, I will combine these two to create a tutorial about spawning a random power-up after a specific amount of time has passed. This idea was born when a couple of days ago, someone commented on a video and made the request. If you are watching Ace of King, I hope this video is suitable for your needs. And with that said, if any of you wants to make a special video request, you are very welcome to comment it down below or hit me up on Discord, the link will be in the description. To achieve this, I will continue on the Terraria scene where we could equip two kinds of pickaxes in order to pick on the gold and the chlorophyll brick. Right now, every time you successfully mine it, it will just disappear using the destroy function of Unity. Instead of just destroying it, we now want to create a new random brick. I keep saying brick, but I think the right word for this should be ore. Or am I wrong? <laughs> Get that? Ok, in Unity, every time I handle more game objects of the same kind, I like to create an empty game object and assign all of the others as childs. This helps to handle any kind of things at the same time, like monsters, enemies, or for this tutorial, all the ores. Next, for this parent game object, I create a C-Shop script, usually with the same name, and as you can guess, I assign it to it. The purpose of the script is to have a function that will be called every time another ore gets destroyed by our powerful almighty pickaxe. For that, a public void function named spawn new break is what we need. Of course, to spawn an ore, we also need a public game object with a prefab in it that will be instantiated. Now with that done, we can go back to the brick script and after the line where we destroy the brick, we now find the brick handler and call the function. I have to mention that there are better ways to get access to this function instead of using the find method, since that way it may slow down your game if you have a lot of active objects in the scene. Here it will work just fine. Next, we instantiate the new ore like this. We need to use as game object at the end in case we want to use the newly created variable for other things in the script. Also, please don't forget to make the child of the brick handler. Let's say you have more than one ore and you want to spawn a random one. What can you do? Well, you need to have an array of game objects that you will fill in the inspector. When instantiating, you use the random.range method starting from zero up to the length of the array. Note that the second parameter is excluded, so this should work just fine. I haven't made the prefabs yet, so that's what I'm doing now in order to put them in the public array. Another thing that we want to check is where exactly the new ore will be spawned. I decided to make this position random as well, but not random at all. It needs to be from the one side to the other of the platform we are standing on. You can now see the X value changing as I am moving it across the screen and the max and min values are what we are looking for. In the script we change the local position and use the new vector 3. You can have it all with zeros if you want it to be at the center of your parent game object. But here the random range is again what we are looking for. If you write the F after your number, the system will know that the random number generated will also include all the float values between minus 2 and 2. For example, 1.23. I also changed the X value to a fixed value and playtest. Let's see. It works great and a new random ore is placed on a random position. A lot of games have mechanics like this and the most popular I know is Snake. Do you remember playing on the nowadays extinct Nokia phone, the very first version of Snake? No? Then who are you? A 9 year old from the PewDiePie channel? Then click on subscribe so that we can hit 100 million subscribers. Let's do it. Ok fine, let's move on. The last thing we want to add is a timer that will wait for a specific amount of time before creating a new brick. The easiest method to do it is with an IE numerator. It allows your piece of code in the function to wait, but every other script of your game will run normally, so don't worry about that. Inside of the function it is necessary to write yield return new, and then it's up to you to decide how you want the time to be counted. I use wait for seconds, that is the same time as in real life. 2 seconds should be enough. Next, we copy the above lines and paste them after we wait for 2 seconds. 
In other words, the eye enumerator will be called. It waits for 2 seconds and then it does its job. But how do we call it? It's almost like calling a normal function, but this time we first write start coroutine with a function name as a parameter. Done. Let's see it in action. We destroy the OR and 1, 2, there it is. A random OR at a random position after a specific amount of time. Of course, you can have a random time as well, but this is up to you. You can use this code for any kind of things in your game. The idea behind it is always the same. That's it guys, like the video if you enjoyed watching and click on the subscribe button if you want to support the channel and watch more game dev tutorials as well as devlogs. Check out these two epic videos that may help you out on your game dev journey. Thanks for watching, you're awesome and I will see you next time. Ciao!